Good day, folks. Greg Budd from Bud's Baits here. Welcome to the African Lure Craftsman. In the ensuing episodes, we'll be taking you along while we design and handcraft timber lures and hopefully get out into the water to use them. I've designed lures for some of the big boys in the industry and I sell my lures worldwide. I'll do my best to show you some of the hacks I've learned along the way. Stay with us and experience the wonders of casting lures to bass, giant catfish, tigerfish in Zimbabwe, which I'm fortunate to call my home, and cross borders with us as we'll target the denizens of the deep all along the African coast in magical places such as Mozambique. Through it all, I'll share a bit of my daily life and business experience, which can be quite tough in Zimbabwe at times, as we take you along to run the daily gauntlet of survival. Subscribe and click the notifications button to stay with us. Hey guys, welcome back to the African Lure Craftsman and another episode of the Garfish Build. You'll see in front of me there's a little bit of a mess today, but I've been working at this uh, a bit. <laughs> I was looking for the word. <clears throat> I have been working quite hard at this. I'm trying to get things uh, ready and uh, getting it kind of processed a little bit so that we can fit more into an episode and just show you a little bit more as we go along so what we've got now is we've got the garfish coming along very very nicely there and what i've done since our last episode is i've actually widened the slot so the wire clicked in again and i've fitted the first three as you can see there you'll see little recesses there those are my imagined weight recesses that's something about about um waiting as we'll need to discuss when we get there but if you can imagine from your toe point obviously the lure is going to always be going forward so it's a case of the the dog wagging the tail and not the tail wagging the dog where you put your weights as close to your joints as possible and that's a leverage, all about leverage there. If you can imagine if the weight was further away here, it's going to be harder for that to swing. And that's a bit of a give and a take as well, because you could be working both ways here on a joint. But as I say, you are moving forwards. If the weight's closer to the, the um, uh, joint there, it's going to actually swing easier like that. But anyway, this is all perceived, and this is doesn't often check out in reality. So we've put our, our perceived slots there and what we're going to do is we're going to fit it at some point and weight it and get it swimming properly but anyway so i've left those recesses there you'll see how i've done this those wires are and i don't know if the camera can get in there a little bit of neatening up to do still but those wires have been slotted in perfectly our joints are there now this one i must admit stuck out a little bit more than i wanted to but i can fix that as well that's not a, a huge error got to be very very careful though because how i'm going to fix that is obviously with the jacaranda dust and the super glue and it's very now easy it's now very easy to get super glue onto the joints i've done it before that's still not a train smash because you can clean it out with a lot of work with a fine scalpel blade and things like that but rather not do it in the first place so today what are we going to do today we are going to continue gluing in these sections and i'll show you how i do that and then we're going to get on to the fins which i've also started doing as you can see there's the tail i've started sculpting those i've left one half so i can do that on camera and show you guys how it's done and there's always many ways to skin a cat but i mean this is i'll show you the way i do it and i find most effective and a few little tricks you can do to keep your your uh, polycarbonate smooth and so there's no major scratches when it comes to varnish and paint anyway so i've done the, the dorsal as well there's the dorsal i haven't done the anal fin which is here in these vice grips and that's also a little bit of advice here advice excuse the pun have a pair of these handy because for little things like that they're very hard to hold in sand or to sculpt so have a pair of these handy you can get a good grip on it there and you can do some good shaping just change the angle occasionally of one one the um, the tool you're using and two the vice grips you can move it anywhere so that's also a handy bit of kit to have there i come to you with a little bit of a heavy heart today because my little dog ralphie has now been diagnosed with they think cancerous tumors 
Um, and it kind of leaves me a little bit sad. Of course, we're treating him. He's still here. He's still eating. He's still wagging his tail. He's just got some very big lumps on his shoulder at the moment. But let's hope he gets better. Uh, and let's not uh, keep you any longer with those stories. Let's get on to the garfish here. As you can see, it's taking on some very nice shapes, very natural shapes, whichever way you put it. Um, up and down. It's looking really, really nice. So I think this is going to be a fantastic bait. I've already had inquiries from quite a few people if I could make this out of resin. And I think I'm going to look at it, but it's going to be quite a quite an expensive bait anyway. And, and putting something like this together, even when it's molded, is going to be quite difficult. Some of the challenges I think I'm going to face in the future on this on this series are, are the foiling. I mean... Most times, or a lot of swim baits, if they're made for bass or pike or muskie or something like that, you might um, foil and paint your sections first before you even pin them. You might do that. But this is what one got two, so many sections. They're such tight sections as well. And uh, mainly, I've actually had to glue, I'll have, I'll have to glue it together before I foil it. So that's going to be a bit of a challenge as well. And also the epoxing is going to be a bit of a challenge. What I've decided to do is I'll leave this tail section off here. So I've got something to hold it by and possibly epoxy it, something like that. I'm not too sure, but we'll figure that out when we get there. Anyway, let's get to our next section and glue that in. So, firstly, we've got to make sure everything's in full alignment. And you can do that just by bending it up and down to see if it meets the top and the bottom. I see there's a little bit of an issue there. That's not a major issue. Yeah, that's meeting there and it's meeting there. And I'd set that in place. And how I do that is a little trick I use is to have a lot of tongue depressors. Pieces of wood matchsticks handy. Have them handy and pre-cut little pieces off them. I've got some here. I've already sealed these with super glue as well. And uh, what you do is you just have those handy. And they're very, very useful to one pin things in place when they insert it into the right slot and to keep wires in the right ear i'll show you where, where i'm going with that just now but something like that and also what it does is when you fill this up with super glue <clears throat> it inhibits the flow of the super glue onto the joint so it's going to help you will get some through there but you're trying to stop all the super glue running out which you hardly get with the jack dust because of the uh, exothermic reaction and it reacts so fast. But you will get it, so that's how I like to do that. As you can see on these ones, I've done it with each of these. And that's then filled them with jack dust. And that's kind of stopped the super glue going onto the joint. Got a lot of freedom there still. Okay, so let's get on to that now. Going to need the specs again. Let's move these out of the way. Very, very important to get that sitting in there straight and flat. It's cut two sides, so it slots in there. I have pre-fitted this before, so I know it'll go in. I might have to just get the flat file on that side there, I think. And let's try get that in again, if I can get in my fingers the right way. Okay, that's going in nicely all the way down. All the way down, and that is... Oh, it slipped out a bit. That is super there. No, not quite, sorry. Quite fidgety, this, but it's important that you do get it in that, that place. And also, as I say, very difficult because you've got all the other bits attached to it. No, no, no. And this will happen, guys. I've had other concerns while I'm, while I'm doing this. I've had other concerns about this bait because I committed the cardinal sin. And I thought it would be a very good lesson on here is, you know, no matter how good you are, whatever level of bait maker you are, lure maker you are, and I'm not saying I'm, I'm good, I'm just saying whatever level you're at, what happens is you can suff uh, sometimes suffer from overconfidence. And I did that with this bait because I was so certain that this is going to swim as it is, but we don't know that yet. 
And I can certainly vouch for the fact that I've made many, many baits and through confidence, I've glued them all together. I've been to the pool to test them and they haven't swum straight up. Sure, you can normally uh, make minor adjustments and you can do things to fix them. But maybe what I should have done is left this section here because that'll probably be something to do with the toe point. Um, I can adjust that if I really need to, but um, I should have probably left this unglued, glued all the other sections together, and then done this one. But as I say, it's the first time. You learn these things as you go along, and uh, let's just hope for the best. Anyway, let me get back to doing this, which is very important. And it will go in there eventually because I had it in there. And I took it out. That's it. A little bit further. Ah, and out again. There we go. That's where we want it. Right there. Guys, we've got our, our little spacer and uh, stopper you might call it in place there our very next step and we remember that these wires have been bound inside and if you focus on here you'll see that i've again used two little pieces of wood on either side of the wire to keep that central and in place i've put those in there and i've broken them off it also serves as a little bit of a a method to hold the wire in place as well so that when you put your super glue and your glue it's not moving and you've got everything aligned and and uh, it's going to work properly so anyway our next step is back to the jack dust which you'll remember in our little container here, very fine jack dust is we're going to fill it in layers that's enough for now and what we're going to do is we're going to use the end of our flat file just to prod that down in place we don't want to remember get super glue on the joint where it's not going to be able to move if we do and it does happen guys you can clean it there are ways it just takes a little bit of elbow grease so the first thing i'll do is i'll put it down the bottom here and i'll just put a drop make sure you got a clean nozzle this is a thin viscosity super glue very thin viscosity as you can see the bottle says so it works better with the jack dust, but it also makes it more dangerous for messing up the parts and the joints. The thick viscosity doesn't sink into the jack dust fast enough, unfortunately. So we're just going to go with that, and we're going to put a little bit of a, a drop in there, and that's fine for now. I can see that reacting. I don't know if you can see the smoke coming out. <clears throat> Make sure we're not getting it on the other joints. And I'm going to continue doing that. I'm also holding the sections apart as far <clears throat> as far as possible as I can with my thumb and forefinger here. And very delicately applying drop at a time with the super glue. Because you can, as I said, it's, it's, it's far too easy for this to rush out of the bottle and just go everywhere. And then it's going to be a total, total mess. Checking constantly to see if I've got glue anywhere else. And so far, so good. I'm going to turn it again, tilt the angle a little bit, put another drop down there, and we've got that section. And we should be good to go on that. Hold it level, guys. Let's run down my finger so it has come out that joint. So let's make sure it doesn't stick there. That should be good to go there. We okay on that. We're okay on that joint. And that wire there, guys, should be solidly in place. And now we can add our next level of glue. A little bit ran down this face here. I'm just going to keep that apart. Our next level of dust. Stoke it down. little drop of glue you'll see the reaction there we go there's the smoke but drop there again the reaction and now around the wire and there we should have that all good to go 
See dust falling out the bottom there. It's c coming around the sides of the wire. We will fit that and fill that just now. But for the all intents and purposes, we've got this section in place. We hope it's in the right place. I think it is. It might be a little bit off, but we can make some manipulations to that by bending these or sanding and various things like that. So for all intents and purposes, that piece is done. That's solidly in there. And we can actually just cut and break that off let's cut it to be safe okay, i'm just marking it here so that we can just make a clean break there we go let's mark it the other side doesn't really matter you don't need the the wood there it's not an integral part of the structure so it doesn't matter if it breaks off roughly on the other side that's going to be filled eventually anyway but for all intents and purposes that's done we have got this one slightly off but I'm sure I can with a bit of careful bending. Yeah, there we go. Let's get that on. They're still all in place. Looking okay. Still slightly off, but we're getting them together as we go. And it's not far off at all, as you can see. Sorry, I should actually show you that properly. Because you can make mistakes, fellas. So, yeah, let's just uh, show you that exactly. So what I've got there is we've done that first basic gluing in of the wire. Uh, this one's a little bit more difficult because it's also got the hook point on that section there. And as I've said before, what we don't want to do is we don't want to get glue onto the joints. It is possible to move off, but it's just better not to do it in the first place. But let's go to the next step here. And the next step will be filling in more of that hole, giving it more integrity. So I'm going to put some more jack dust in there. Just get that in. We can smooth out everything later on. At this stage, our strength is already there. We don't have to compact it or anything like that. Let's let it foam out. The looser it is, the more it will foam. Hold the angle so that the glue is running the right way. And as you'll see, that will foam out nicely there. And that there is pretty much what we want for getting that firmly in there. The next thing now would be to how do we secure this place here this area here so if you look on at the wire there we've got to one first make sure it's perfectly centrally located and two we've got to actually glue that in without again getting getting uh, super glue on the joints so again what i do for these things is using my specially prepared little little sticks Sometimes I need to shape them a bit, which I'll do on the sander behind me here. Just one quickly. Okay, all I'm doing there is getting a little bit of a flat on the edge there. And what I can do with that is I can slot that into place, get the wire in a central position, which is a bit more like so. And that's perfect. I don't know if you can see that. But that keeps that wire exactly central in the wire recess. And it now, now gives us more play and more movement here. This section isn't glued in yet, so I wouldn't worry about what it's doing at the moment. So now let's get on to our next very, very tricky stage. And this is a little bit of an art. Bearing in mind, a lot easier if we had molded this and now the wires are in place. You just mold them in place with your resin. But prototyping and making your first lure is always a little bit more difficult. So what I'm going to do here, more jack dust. I'm going to hold the lure down so that the jack dust will fall into those slots. And then I'm just going to flick it. And it falls in there nicely. Flick it. Falls in there nicely use some sort of tooling to get it out of the areas you don't want it in i see something else here guys i just need to do one thing quickly i need another small piece of wood in the back here and that straightens the wire up in this side Okay, let's get that in properly. It also holds that out of out of the way. 
blow off any excess that might be in the in the slot and the, around the join get some more in there give it a tap and now let us drop our first drops doing this on camera is very difficult because normally i'd have this so close to my nose it would be impossible and we don't we want the angles right so the glue doesn't run so what i'm going to do is the bottom section here first don't worry about the stick gluing in there if it does we can file that off and i'm going to put a little drop on the face there let that run in i'm keeping the angle down so that the glue doesn't go into the join there i hope it hasn't no it hasn't and I saw a little bit of smoke there, so that's going to be okay. I can actually break that off, get that out of the way now. We can sort that out just now. And now let's go to the other side. And again, keeping the angle. That should have put that in place. So I'm going to actually break that off as well. So I can actually access it. And in the recess there, I'm going to put another drop. And hopefully we'll get it set in there keep this moving i can feel a bit of glue there so that's probably not great but hey we'll clean it up keep the angle right bit of smoke and we should be good on that yeah looking okay still moving still okay Although I can see a little bit of glue there. Always have your earbuds, as we spoke about last time, handy. Get off any excess while you can. Back to this method, guys. So I think you can see the amount of material we've got. I just don't want to lean that over too much just yet. I think it's all right. I think we have made a bit of a mess, but it's it's not it's not a train smash. The amount of material we've got in here, this wire is never going to move. I mean, the body might decay around it, might get chewed off the wire, but it's never going to move. That is set in there so solidly that nothing is going to break it. Anyway, that should be dry now. We can now start making uh, little cleanups and get out those little pieces of wood we put in using a sharp scalpel so we can see what sort of play and movement we've got in there. The whole time I'm doing this, I'm just thinking constantly ahead and I'm thinking, what is the next move? How I'm going to paint it? How I'm going to foil it? And I tell you what, I'm a little bit nervous about that, but we'll get there. It's one of the important things I think about lure building is just play, experiment, see what you can do, see what you can't do. And um, you'll eventually come up with a method that works. <laughs> Blow that out. Okay, we didn't get too much glue there. That's fine. Bit of a cleanup operation there just now. That, that wire is not in place. Let me just set that in place quickly. It's not glued and see what we've got. Yeah, okay, a little bit of a... I can feel a bit of glue in there, but it's not, a, it's not terrible. And I don't think I'll have too much trouble cleaning that up just now. So that's fine. So now we've got all our sections together. They're all aligned. And the only thing we haven't done is this last section, which I'm not going to bind. The reason being is because we've got it slotted in there perfectly and we haven't got any hook points or anything on that section. I mean, if that gets, I can guarantee it won't be pulled off the wire. But if it did, you know what, you still got your fish, you still got the rest. So basically, we're almost there, guys. All it would take now is the tail section on there get that into place our tails and our fins okay, I've got that the wrong way around that actually helps if you put it the right way around our tail and our fins and we're almost good to go we've got a lovely little garfish there very natural in all his his configurations, I mean, that just looks amazing. If you can see that curve from the top there, um, quite an amazing sort of like 
the range of play we've got in that. So that's quite nice. Anyway, so let's get on to that. I think what we're going to do is glue in this last tail section. And then we're going to get on to sculpting the fins, cutting the slots, and get this bait to a stage where we're ready to wait and test it. I think that's going to be the next thing. So let's go to get on with that now. So we're back here. We've now glued in all the parts. We've got the alignment pretty straight. The movement is pretty awesome, I think. Got some nice sound to it. And what we're going to do, there was some extra sawdust falling out, which shows that there's still a little bit more to do, but still I can get to that. Uh, what we're going to do now is go into the fins. As I said earlier, I'd already sculpted half of that. We're just going to show you how I do this and how, um, how well, the easiest method I've found to do it. Um, and the first thing we do on that is draw your striations in with a, a CD marker where you want them. I need the glasses again, always back to the glasses. And try and get them. I'm going to count these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'd counted on the actual photograph. And we're going to continue taking those in the same widths. Out there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exactly right. Okay, so don't forget to do it on both sides because as you work on each side, you're going to lose clarity. This should stay on the polycarbonate and you can just basically trace over your lines on the other side there. I'm taking the lines a little bit beyond where they're going to stick into the actual tail section or the caudal peduncle of the, the lure. And they'll be quite hidden by the wood when we actually glue it in. So there we've got it. We've drawn those on there. And now let's get to the actual, the actual sculpting. You'll see here I've rounded the edges of the polycarbonate. It's actually very, very smooth there. I've used a combination of files and uh, 320 three, uh, water paper to do that. You'll notice how it's lost its clarity. Never worry about that, though, because there's a couple of little tricks you can use. One is a lighter, and you just use some form of lighter to run over the polycarbonate, and it kind of clears all the burrs and everything away. The other thing is, provided you've sanded it down with a thousand grit afterwards and got rid of most of the, uh, the the burrs and the scratches as soon as you apply any form of top coat to that it's going to actually clear the whole thing up even if you just dipped your finger in water and covered that you'd find that clears up very very quickly so anyway let's get to the sculpting and back to to the dremel tool for that what i've got here is a collar or a chuck that I've actually specially had to fa uh, to fashion, not for this particular Dremel, for, but for another one where the standards didn't fit. You can get different sized collars, but um, for this particular one, it didn't come with them. So I've taken a Dremel collar with a smaller uh, bit capacity there, and what I've done is I've filed down this section here where it fits in, so it actually fits in there. Standard one just won't fit in there. And that works quite well. So we'll get that in there. We will get that back on. And just remember, there's you don't have to use a Dremel. I mean, previously I've used files. I've used various things to get those shapes. Just a folded sandpaper is another good way. Just etch them in there. But the Dremel just works quicker. So we're going to go with that. And for it, we've got a whole lot of dental bits here. I'm sure you can see. And we're going to choose one with a little bit of a sharp edge. That one looks like it'll work quite well. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me get something white or something to hold it against so you can see the, the shape I'm using. And we're gonna get that inside the Dremel and we're gonna go for it. Widen that a little bit. Get it in there. 
couple of turns or tweaks and we should be good to go. Holding like a pen so I can see my lines on something light. Just repeat the process, go over and over it. You'll get a nice little furrow in there. Don't worry about any areas where it goes deeper or digs in because we can tidy those up. Next line. Nothing's perfect in, in nature, so you don't have to have absolutely straight lines. We can clean them up a bit with files and sandpaper just now. Perfect. So now from that, I find the easiest tool is a, the tip of a round needle file. And what we do is just holding it firmly is just start working that into that groove takes out all the excess you can see the extra extra material coming off there and then on to the next and so on put the, the section you're working on against something firm so you can really dig in there Always work, obviously, and there's no other choice, really, but work the way the striations are going. If you slip, you know what? It's just an added, added little bit of detail. Um, and if it's too serious, you can get it out. So. Okay, so we're pretty much there. We're going to go to the other side, and we're going to do them on the other side quickly. Then we'll get the, the shaping on the edges and we'll eventually just for an added little bit of realism we'll put some little burrs in there as well just so we can get some shape to the back of the tail as well where the striations end so turn it over Okay, so I've done both sides of the tail now, the striations there, they've all been done. I'm just going to clean off the excess material with a little bit of uh, 320. And I'm not going to bother too much. Always sand in the way that you want the striations to go as well. You don't want any cross sanding or anything like that, that might show up. So just sand that way, um, get the excess off on both sides before we do a final clean up and shaping on that. Okay, so now that I've got those in there... What I'm going to do is I'm going to shape the back of this tail. As you can see, it's still a flat. And for that, flat file. Best thing here. Just a little bit of elbow grease. Just turn the file as well so you don't just get a, a bevel of one angle. I find the triangular file just so handy for, for all sorts, including cleaning these up and getting a sharp edge in there in the in the striation there in the groove um, which we'll get to just now but one thing at a time get the angle on there properly okay to the other side okay get that done get them roughly even and then we can finish that up with initially a bit of 220 
sanding the same way again. You don't want cross hatching as such on these bits that are going to be opaque, uh, have some clarity to them. We don't want to take too much off. We could make it more natural and really thin it out, but again, we don't want to do that because of strength. Although polycarbonate's as tough as nails, I think leaving a little bit of meat on it is a good idea so that it doesn't take on dents or marks on those thinner sections. I'm going to go back to the round file, move the lure out of the way. And let's just get a lot of these furrows here nice and neatened up. So now you want to use the, the file very flat where it's thicker so you can widen those grooves. Just follow the groove though with the point of it and then adjust your angle. that up there and also what we're going to do is we're going to take the grooves down around the lip of the edges of the tail here to give that little bit of extra realism one flowing motion is probably best okay to the other side So we've done all our striations on the fins, yeah? It looks a little bit untidy, as you'll see, but that stuff does kind of come out with a bit of, a bit of elbow grease there. Um, and what I'm going to do now is using the triangular file, the needle file, I'm going to try and do these little knurls on the end here. Um, just getting into the groove there and following it around. Just create a little bit of a knurl, and we're going to do it from both sides on each on each line this sort of detail guys I think we all know is not ultimately necessary for fishing a fish isn't going to look at it and go wow look at that it's got intricate detail let's eat it but certainly I enjoy doing it and I think having these little bits of detail certainly if anything attracts the fishermen if not the fish um, and it's always good to just see that attention to detail being done, I think. So I followed that around there. I've done it there. Just rounding it a little bit as I hit that, that edge. Trying to create a path that I can get the round file in there and just open them up a bit. And let's do it on this side. There we go. Now we'll get the round file. And we'll accentuate those a little bit. A little bit of a corner there. Get it off. Without stabbing yourself like I just have. All part of the fun. Yeah, and again, why well, break the points off? These things come with such sharp tips. It's actually quite dangerous. <clears throat> Although, <clears throat> excuse me, I must say, I miss those the tips on the file sometimes because they are necessary. Okay, other side of the tail. Looking quite nice. It'll clean up nicely. But what I'm going to do is put a few burrs here. I tried with the file. I did make some little incisions there I can use as a starting point. But I think far easier just to use this. Don't want to go deep. We just want a little, little indication there of shape. Or the end of each striation. Or each fin ray, should we say. Um, so let's get this on. Get it on slow. Straight across the loo in line with the striations. 
One, two, three, four, five, put more there. Okay, other side. Okay, and what that does is gives us a starting point to now follow through with the file. So I'll just work on those quickly, take those and join them with these other lines here. Just like so. Even if you're not doing uh, fins and things like that for swim baits, I mean, there's a lot of areas that you can use these techniques of shaping. Uh, and there's no rocket science to this again. I mean, it's just the basics, but it does take a little bit of, of effort, but you know, having those finer, finer details, I think, are a, a major, major sell point, particularly on a, a freestyle custom bait like this. We're nearly done. We're certainly done to a stage that I'm happy with for uh, now, which is where we can, let me just get some water paper onto that. That's 600 grit water paper. Got a bowl of water here. This is just to clean it up. Basically, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Get all the major burrs off. Again, sanding with the, with the well, I say grain, but with the, the uh, direction of the, fin rays on both sides there i'll work on this more off camera as well and then what we're going to move on to is gluing this actually into the tail section which is going to make it easier to work on as well i should have done that first but hey no one accused me of being smart ever um so there we have it guys there's that there you can see that it's Kind of like got an opaque finish now, which isn't too bad anyway. That'll clear up with the, the clear coats. But one other thing you can do is just run a, a cigarette lighter over it or, or some sort of lighter. Don't burn it. Don't bend it. But just if you do something like that, it does clear it up a bit, gets rid of any extra little burrs. You can see it clearing actually there already. I don't know if you... Let me hold it against the dark background on this side and see if you can see without burning myself. Yeah, if you can see it clearing up there. So it does actually clear the plastic a little bit as well. But you don't want to hold the flame on there for too long. I don't know if you can see that. Quite nice, actually. I only learned this recently, by the way. There we go. So it clears it up. I'm going to clear up these recesses here a bit later on. But let's get this glued into the wood, which is an important wood, uh, part of the 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 build and why i want to do that is because this is going to give me a little handle to carry on working on this and also i want to show you a technique of gluing this these in before we get on to the other fins i was saying originally and i think the first video that we we're going to pin it i'm not going to pin it anymore i don't think it's necessary we've talked about it already that's only going to be glued or epoxied onto there it's going to be pretty strong, but if we lose that bit, this lure is still going to swim and you're going to lose your fish. We could always rebuild another bit. But one of the things that I've used, a technique in the past, to give methods like this of gluing fins to wood, etc., is just cross-hatching. And you get a very sharp scalpel blade. You watch your fingers, I must say. And you cross-hatch hatch the section <clears throat> that's going to go into the wood when i say cross hatch i mean doing lines serrations the full area it's going into the wood one way and then doing the other way so you're forming little squares on there basically that gives it a very very rough texture i mean i can feel that it's like sandpaper and i use this when i put leads in lures as well uh, often, depending on the mixture you're using to actually glue your, your lead in, but epoxy doesn't stick well to, to lead. And you'll find if you've got a smooth lead and that area of the lure breaks the lead, it won't fall out, but it's, it's, it's more likely to do so. So I do this on my leads, I do this on my plastics, I do it on everything. I do it on both sides, of course.
And what I'm going to use to glue this in <coughs> is a, <coughs> a super glue as well, but it's a much thicker viscosity. And what that's going to do for me is it's going to allow me more leeway to play with it. With this super glue I've been using, I'd probably get that far and would be, be, be stuck. Because as you can see, it's already, with those serrations, made it a lot, lot tighter. And we want to be able to get into place. So the super glue, the thin viscosity stuff, will just won't work. Um, the thicker stuff will allow you to just manipulate it a little bit more. It's a lot uh, more forgiving. So let's get to that now. So my tail section, which is going to be glued into the wood, and there's quite a substantial amount of it. I mean, basically from my finger onwards there. It's all cross-hatched now. It's got a very rough, rough feel to it. We're going to just fit it quickly. Um, and make sure, uh, wrong way around. Let's make sure we put it in the right way. Make sure it goes in there and slips in in the right position straight away, which is about it. Check your alignment and everything is dead on with that. I've already checked it. I think you can see that there. Only thing here we haven't done is we've left this shank with this caudal peduncle here very chunky we left it one for integrity but two so we could play around with this tail section and get the slot cut in i think what i'll do very very quickly before i stick it in is just take this down a little bit i'm not going to take it down to what a, a natural garfish might have at the back here because we still do need a bit of strength um, but i'll take it down a little bit now quickly so let's do that with some rough paper and or a file maybe and we'll just get that quickly quickly done we've sealed this remember we'll give it a bit of a rounded shape here quite easy to do as i say not a lot we've just finished shaping this we've just put a little bit of a round edge on there we still want that thick shank there for a little bit more strength and I'm going to seal that again, although, as I said, said before, uh, with most timbers, um, some more than others, super glue just sinks in. It, it literally drinks it up. So, I mean, once sealed, it's sealed right down to a few millimeters. I wouldn't even really bother. This is what I use for two things, actually, for these sort of things and also for gluing eyes into lures. So when I glue an eye into an eye recess, like, for instance, here, I'll use this. It's more forgiving and allows you to move the eye and manipulate the eye for a few more seconds than the, fin the thin viscosity. The thin stuff, it sticks, it's stuck. You've got your eyes skew. It's a mission. Now you're trying to break it out. You break off the paint. You break off everything. So that's something to remember there. Now what I'll do here, and this is going to be a little bit of a science, and let's just hope on camera I don't mess it up. Because I'm going to put a little drop on either side, and this is going to have plenty of strength being in that little bit of wood just like so and like so spread it around nicely hang it down make sure we've got it the right way and we're going to get that in there in one hit like that you'll see how it's pulled around the edges that's fine let it do that it's already stuck you just got to be quick when you do that and that tail is Perfect. We'd put this aside now. We'll let it dry. And then what we'd do is we'd put a little bit of jack dust in there and over these areas here and the other side. And we'd just fill that in and file it down. That is perfectly sealed. And I can guarantee you when that's dry, it is going absolutely nowhere. So that's that section done. Next step, let's cut the slot for the back dorsal fin. And we can get that back dorsal fin into place. And then we can finally get onto the anal fin. And then we've pretty much got a swim bait that's ready to wait and ready to test. So onto that, that, that now. Okay, so for my dorsal section, we've got to remember where we're putting it. And we're putting the dorsal deep into the lure here. We've got to remember that we've got our wire coming right up to the tip here. So I'm going to have to reshape the bottom of this. And there'll probably be a little bit of of reshaping and sanding back to make it fit but we're going to cut a slot straight into the top there and we're going to try and do it as straight as possible so this guy can sink down 
and basically fit right into there so let's start with that what i'll use is i'll go back to my my circular cutting disc and we're ready to go let's get that lined up by eye make sure we don't cut anything off i'm going to cut basically straight down here guys and get everything out of the way oh oh Let's get this the other way. Better. Just get a locating line in there first. Always difficult now that it's it's uh, joined together. Perhaps something I should have done initially, but hey. We are where we are, it is what it is. You can see where the super glue is there. It's all knurling up and actually creating quite a noxious smoke. Alignment is so important guys and it's quite a finicky job but hey If we have any success with this bait I will be probably making a, a Mold for it uh, so I can cast it because it's just too hard to make out of timber all the time um, and yeah It's I'm not looking forward to remaking the old bait, but it'll have to be done. I guess but uh, it'll be beautiful when you've got all these sections done and they come out of the mold pretty much like that if you use a silicon mold. Okay, we're going to stop there with that. And we're going to go to our other technique now of drilling in there and actually just widening it in places. We've cut through, it is straight. I can see that. We're going to get that recessed deeper, not right at the edges exactly where we need it i'm just going to mark this to see where i can we have to take it off oh, i need my pencil for that so around about there we've got to remove let me put that over there where we can see it around about there we're going to have to remove that section there so i'll use the same tool just to do a basic cut in that quickly Get that out of the way. Yeah. There we have it. Before we go any further, what I want to do is I just want to check out my layout and i always uh, i've said it before refer to your original tracing or your drawing we could have used either just going to put everything in place and it's a perfect fit there just to see where these will go remember that'll be slotting into there so it'll it'll be right exactly probably a little bit longer but that's fine we've had the the serrations we want to make sure these fins are going into the right place so basically they hang over this edge of the lure here is where we want them to make that accurate and now i've stuck myself to that because it wasn't quite dry yet but hey it doesn't matter so if i put that there okay the accuracy to the picture will be slightly off but it's the best we can do with as many sections as this in the swim bait so we're going to basically probably be you know, a few millimeters off if anything so i'm happy with where i'm going with that just line that up again put that yeah no it won't be bad at all we're just going to miss a section of the front that's all so if i'd go into that recess there that's fine 
Okay, I'm going to mark that with a pencil. Uh, where are we? So it's a little bit behind. Okay, that's fine. I know exactly where I are. I don't even need, need to mark it. Okay, so let's get this finished up so we can fit that fin. Bit of changing of tools here, guys. Back and to and fro from one to the other, but uh, highly necessary at this stage. Just wanted to get that widened, uh, basically shortened time here. Um, if we make a recess, it's a bit wide. There's ways to fix that too. It's not a problem. Let's get back into here with this. Get those sides straight. Okay, so guys, we've cut our slot in the back here. It's a little bit wider than, than uh, the fin. When I say wider, it's marginally wider than the actual polycarbonate. But I've, I've done it in such a way that it actually just slots in perfectly. But remember, what we've got to do is reseal everything. So we're going to just reseal this. I'm going to hold it that way so we don't run super glue into that section yet. Resealing is very uh, wrong super glue. Remember thin viscosity. Very important. Let's just get that up there. Sometimes handy to have a little bit of wood just to manipulate that, move it around. And that'll be that sealed again. What I'm going to do for this is just put some super glue on here. Put a drop on there. It makes it more manageable. You don't get more than is needed into the into the uh, fin slot and that is perfectly sealed there okay so we've sealed that wood again on both sides i can see a little bit of okay that's done and we fit it off in we make sure it fits again we don't want to glue it in there now if the glue isn't dry but yeah it's fine so remember cross hatching on the bottom Don't cut yourself, very easy. Hold it far away from the blade. So also give it a little bit more grip and meat to actually fit into that slot, aside from the actual bonding properties it has. Okay, that's fine. Let's even do a few on the bottom here. Uh, not too close to the fingers. That'll do. Yeah, quite rough. Give that another fitting before we glue it in there. And yeah, that is just so perfect. Let's check the alignment. Alignment, I don't know if you guys can see that. Perfect. That is straight up. Yeah, I can't see anything wrong with that. So let's just go for it, eh? A whole lot of this is potluck. You've got to have a little bit of luck along with your skill set and just hope for the best. So let's get our glue on there and then we'll have our dorsal in place. Okay, so back to the thick viscosity. Uh, liberal amounts on there. Well, not too much. You don't want it to run, but just smear it across the whole length. Remember, we are going to fill this in again with jack dust and super glue around the, uh, the edges, sand it back, and it will be as strong as you need it to be. So let's get that in there. <sighs> Let's get it set where it needs to be set. And let's just check our alignment again. Don't want this going wrong at this point. It's very hard to hold this. Okay, slightly that way. There we go. 
hold this hold it there a bit uh, that looks pretty good to me slightly slightly this way sorry I'm gonna just change my angle here yeah there we go we've got our fin glued in there uh, I've checked the alignment the alignment is perfect it's spot on I don't know if you can see that alignment there, but it's all spot on. I might be holding an angle because I can't actually see if I've aligned it properly, but it is spot on there. Um, and what I've done here is I've actually raised that fin a little bit. Two reasons is clearance for there. And two, let's pretend this bait fish is real and it's escaping from a gigantic predator. I don't think the fins would be folded flat anyway. They're going to be flared. They're going to be up and raised. So we're going to leave that there. Now to secure that in there, you see, you can see here I haven't been specifically surgical with the recess there. Great. That's, that's fine because it gives us more room to actually slip in things like this jack dust into there. And we work it down with a piece of wood, uh, even a pin or something, if you've got a pin handy, get it right into the... That side we can even put more. Get it right into those recesses. Make sure it's not on the actual fin because we don't want it sticking to there, it's going to be hard to get off. Okay, before our final bit of super glue on there. And there we go. I'm going to get that earbud I so often talk about. And move that. Oh. And get that in there. A little bit of glue on the fin is right is, is okay. It's uh, still to be worked on and it's clear anyway, so we wouldn't be bothered too much about that. And there, for all intents and purposes, is our dorsal fin on our on our bait. Looking quite good as we we recall. That's the, oh, there we go. That would have just slipped out on our bait there. I'm liking where that's going. Just have to put the anal fin in next and then do the weighting and we're ready to paint and ready to go to foil. So, ladies, gents, that's probably about as much as I can do for today. Um, time is calling. I've got to go and do a few other things. Um, if you do like what you see, please hit like, subscribe. And for those of, uh, the, uh, of you who do follow us, give us a share if you can. Tell your mates and um, stay tuned for next episode.